Hey Land Party Gamers, welcome to the instructions on how to build your own Steam Cache server. Now what a Steam Cache does is as your uh, people at the LAN start downloading files off of Steam servers, updates, patches, games, etc. That's really going to bog down your network if everybody's getting stuff off the internet at the same time, especially if a large game patch came out that morning. What a Steam Cache server does is the first computer that gets the file off the internet, it also grabs a copy of that file and puts it on the network share so that the next time somebody grabs that file, it bypasses going on the internet and gets it straight from the network share. And we do this by replacing the DNS on the network so that the Steam cache is the DNS. So anytime a request that goes to steam.com is made, it actually redirects to the local cache. The way that we do this is we have uh, an Ubuntu server, which is a Linux distribution, with two docked programs running inside of it. One is the cache itself, which is going to store our games and our downloads and patches. The second is the DNS, which is going to redirect Steam traffic to itself and all of the traffic as it should be to the internet. We're using an ARS Technica guide. Uh, which we'll link in the uh, description below to show you step-by-step -step how to do this, but we'll go as best we can with you in this video. You're gonna go ahead and make a Ubuntu server and you basically just download it off of Ubuntu's website. It's free. Grab the server distribution, as we don't need a GUI to run this, and um, have a box with at least a terabyte or two of space on the hard drive, and go ahead and install it on that space, and uh, we'll get started. We already have a uh, Ubuntu server loaded here, and we're going to go ahead and open it up. So what we've done so far is we've made a user account, and we've done uh, sudo right there at the beginning, and sudo uh, logs you in as administrator for the following command that you type. We did an app de get update, so we can see which updates are available for our distribution here, and we'll go ahead and tell it to proceed with downloading the upgrades. Now this is a pretty new installation of Ubuntu, so there shouldn't be all too many upgrades it needs, but it's getting them pretty quickly. Okay, now that the updates to the operating system are finished and downloaded, we can go ahead and start installing our containers here that will be our servers. So first thing that the guide says to do is install NFS common. So install NFS common. And yes, okay, that's gonna download and install there. Okay, now that NFS common is uh, downloaded, we're going to make a directory uh, for the um, for the Steam cache to go into. So we're going to do sudo make dir p dash p slash srv slash steam cache slash d. This is now it says depot on the guide, ignore that, it's just supposed to be data. And I'll make that, okay. And then we're not gonna worry about mounting anything. Uh, the guide assumes that you're putting your uh, NAS as the point where your uh, Steam cache is gonna be. I'm putting it right on the hard drive that Ubuntu is installed on. Um, if you are gonna use a secondary device to put the Steam cache data on, you will have to mount your files in that folder. All right, so let's see here. The next set is to make sure that the permissions are set correctly in this folder. So we're going to do a chmod capital R777 SRV cache data. And now we're going to install Docker. But first thing we're gonna do, I wanna show you how to edit the IP address of Ubuntu. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go sudo vi, which is a text editing program, uh, etc network 
Um, and then interfaces. And this is going to allow us to edit our interfaces. Now, I've already done this one. So what you would see typically is this word static here would say uh, DHCP or dynamic. Uh, if you, you're going to want a standard IP address, a static IP address rather. So you want to use something like this. I have my address set as 99.2. I have my net mask set as a net mask that uh, the other computers on the network will be using. And my gateway using the gateway that the other computers are also using. And then I put in a couple of name servers that I trust that are out on the internet. Uh, 8888 is going to be uh, in, uh, Google's DNS server, and the 68 address there is one of Cox uh, DNS servers. This will ensure that I always have the same IP address to the Linux distribution here at all times. Once this is edited, you edit uh, by pressing insert, and you can type in here. Once this is edited, you press escape to get out of insert, and then you press shift Z twice and that saves the file. So now we know our IP address is static and uh, that will be the next step for you. Uh, now what we can do is build this Steam cache uh, and, and actually download it here. So we're gonna be using a program called Docker, which allows you to dock programs kind of like their own virtual uh, computers inside of Linux real basic way to look at it. So we need to install it first. So we're gonna do sudo curl ssl, and keep in mind the capitalization here, https get docker.com slash, then space pipe, which is above the inner key, space sh. And that's gonna go ahead and download the uh, prerequisite program docker and we're just going to go ahead and wait for this to install all right so now that docker is installed we can go ahead and download the specific docker uh, programs that are going to be running in it uh, the first thing that we're going to do is download the steam cache itself so be very careful when you type this uh, you can get it straight from the manual that we're going to have listed in the description below. So sudo docker run dash dash name steam cache dash dash restart equals always. And what that means is if it stops, it will try to restart it automatically. A couple of arguments here, D and V, and where it's going to be installed to uh, where it's going to hold the cache. So SRV steam cache data colon data cache okay p then we're going to give it what ports it can use 80 and then steam cache slash steam cache latest to get the most current build and there it goes it, it couldn't find it on the local server obviously so it's getting it from the internet and there we go. So we have the Docker image Steam cache running on this computer. So now we have to download the DNS. And the DNS is where uh, it's going to do a lot of the work of routing traffic either from the network to the internet or to the local cache, depending on whether or not the files are located locally. So again, we'll install that by doing sudo docker run dash dash name steam cache dash dns base restart always d p this time we're going to use ports 53 53 on udp e steam cache i underscore ip equals now this time we're going to put in the ip address we set manually earlier so 192.168.99.2 for this machine, uh, your machine may be different. Steam cache slash steam cache dash DNS colon latest. And it can't find it locally, so it's gonna download it off the internet, which is perfect, which means I typed it all in correctly. Okay, so if you get this message, it should, everything should be working. These long 
uh, file names here that you're seeing are the names of the Docker images uh, that containers rather that they're being held in. It's kind of like a computer's name, but they make it so long that it can't be duplicated. So to see if they're, they're actually running, we can do sudo docker ps. Okay, so now that we've got the Docker images loaded, we need to make sure that it works. Um, so what we'll do is we will, um, first what we wanna do is reboot to make sure that they still run after uh, rebooting because if they don't turn right on right away that means that we screwed up somewhere and we need to start from the beginning hopefully that doesn't happen here and Ubuntu. okay there we go no errors yet so let's just go ahead and log in so let's try this again docker PS. There we go. So they're both running, they're both up. But how do we know whether or not it's working? Okay, well, this is what we'll do is we'll run a command that is a saved file within one of the Dockers. So we do sudo docker exec. And what this is, is it's loading into the Docker named Steam cache. And within that Docker, there's a file called scripts slash watchlog.sh. Okay, so now it's watching the log. So what we need to do now is on a computer that is logged in uh, to Steam within the same network as the Steam cache is try to download a file. So what we'll do is we'll open up Steam here. We'll install Cache Crashers. That's a pretty easy one. Here, install. So it's preparing the files for installing. So this is going to the network, to the internet. And let's now let's take a look at the, and look at that. Those are all the files that are downloading from the internet. And what you're gonna notice is red files are files that were not already on the server. Green files are files that are already on the server that we didn't have to go uh, get from the internet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let Castle Crashers install fully, then we're gonna delete it, and then we're gonna install it again and see exactly uh, how it looks when, uh, when we download it again. And if it shows all green or mostly green, that means that we are in fact getting our update files from the local cache. Uh, as more and more people download files from Steam and then subsequent people download those same files, you'll notice that the network impact and uh, on, on, on your LAN is much, much less than it would have been normally. So we're gonna go ahead and let this download and then try it again in a minute. All right, so now that Castle Crashers is finished downloading, uh, we should have no more logs here on the Steam cache. Let's go ahead and delete Castle Crashers. There we go and then reinstall it and see what the log looks like. Ah, right, look at all that green, it's like Christmas. So that means that we're getting all of these files off the local share and it should be downloading much, much faster than it did before. Now I'm on a Wi-Fi connection here in another room, so it's not gonna be as fast as it would be if you were directly wired into the DNS, uh, but that's pretty much all it is so um just keep in mind if you want to keep an eye on the log you'll have to remember the command to to the watch uh watchdog.sh but other than that for watchlog.sh excuse me um but that's pretty much it you're all set you just have to uh make sure that uh, your last step here is you have to log into your router so in our case it's pfsense and it'll have a couple of sections here um, in, my, in my router. It's under general setup on which, which DNS servers are we using. Now, typically these would be automatically uh, given to you by your ISP or your DHCP server. But in our case, we want clients to go directly through our DNS that we just made with Linux. So 99.2. And then if for some reason that's offline, we'll, we'll have them go straight to 8888 just to keep the LAN party going while we reboot 
the DNS server. But primarily, we need this pointed right at that Ubuntu client so that uh, we make sure that all as much traffic as possible goes through that so we can use the Steam cache to its max potential. Anyway, I hope this uh, this helps. And, and if you have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. But definitely check out the ARS Technica uh, guide here, and I'll be putting it straight into the, um, the, the description of the video. But this is pretty much uh, how we figured out how to use it. And they theirs is a little different because they're using a network share um, and a DNS as, as separate boxes, whereas ours are all on the same two terabyte drive. Thanks for watching, and for more LAN party tips, tricks, and more, subscribe to San Diego LAN here on YouTube. You can also find San Diego LAN on Twitch, Facebook, and uh, check out our website at sandiegolan.net. Have a great day.